Here we are again in my development environment. I'm going to show you how to create a custom Vault Explorer command from scratch. The command itself will be very simple. It'll be just a single command that pops up a dialog that says hello world, and that's it. This is very similar to the hello world sample in the SDK, but there are a few differences. If you want to follow along with this exact code, you can download it from the additional materials section on the AU website. I'm going to start by creating a new class library. This means I'm creating a DLL. It doesn't run on its own. It runs in the context of another application, Vault Explorer in this case. Here is our project. Let's start by adding our references. Again, I'm going to be going to the SDK. The Extensibility Framework DLL is a com common component and always gets referenced. Autodesk Connectivity Explorer Extensibility contains the interface we need to create our custom command. Now that our references are set, we can add our import statement. To set up our customization, we need to implement the I extension interface in a public class. Visual Studio makes this easy by creating blank versions of everything we need to implement in the interface. All we need to do is fill this in. I'm going to skip over command sites for now. We have no custom tabs, so we'll return nothing in the detail tabs function. The same goes for hidden commands. <coughs> I'm not doing anything special during log on, log off, or startup or shutdown, so I'll leave those functions blank. Back to command sites. This is where I return the custom commands. Each command must be contained within a command site. So I'll create that now. We have to give it a unique key string as the first parameter. It's usually a good idea to prefix this with your company name. Next comes the display name. If you are using submenus, this parameter becomes the text of the submenu. 
there are some properties I can set on the site. First, I'll specify the location. Let's put it under the file menu so that it's easy to find. Next, we will set display as pull-down menu to false. This means we will not have a submenu. Now let's create our custom command. Again, I'm going to give it a unique string and a display name. There are properties I can set on this object, but I don't need to for this demonstration. I bind the command to the site by calling the add command function on the site. If I were to run this now, I would get a command, but clicking on it wouldn't do anything because we haven't put in the event handler yet. We need to bind to the execute event on our command item. In VB, this is done with the add handler keyword. Unfortunately, VB doesn't generate the handler function for us, so I'll just type it up real quick. There we go. This is how you set up an event handler. And to finish off the command sites function, I need a return value, which is going to be an array of command sites. In this example, I only have one site, so I just create an array with a single site. Now let me show you what the handler function looks like. It has two inputs. One of them is an object called sender, and then the other one is a set of event args. The sender object is pretty standard behavior for event handlers. It's usually not used in the case of vault custom commands. These command args are documented in the SDK documentation. For this example, I'm not going to be using it though. All I need to do is pop up my dialog. I need to add a reference to System Windows Forms in order to get my message box class. Now that our code is mostly completed, I need to get it ready for deployment. I'll consult the SDK documentation. It mentions that I need to have five assembly attributes. Three of them are provided by Visual Studio in the assembly info file. I just need to make sure that the data is filled in. The last two attributes need to be set by me. These attribute types are in the Extensibility Framework DLL.
the API version string has to be 4.0 for all Vault 2012 extensions. The extension ID has to be a globally unique identifier, or GUID, that I generate myself. Another thing we need for deployment is an XML file with the extension vset config. The SDK documentation provides the XML. I just need to change the assembly name. In Visual Studio, we can set this file to be copied whenever I compile. There's another thing we need to do. In Visual Studio 2010, by default, projects are created using .NET 4.0. But if we're doing an extension into Vault, Vault is running under .NET 3.5 so we need to make sure that that is our target .NET framework. If this isn't done, then our DLL cannot load because a 3.5 application cannot load a 4.0 DLL. Now we are ready to copy everything to our deployment folder. Again, the SDK documentation tells us what to do. We need to create a folder under Program Data, Autodesk, Vault 2012, Extensions. If these folders do not exist, we have to create them. So I have my Autodesk folder. I do not have my Vault 2012 folder. I create a folder for the extensions, and then I create a folder for this individual extension. We only need to copy over our DLL and the vset config file. The Autodesk DLLs are already part of Vault Explorer and do not need to be deployed. Let's run Vault Explorer and see what happens. and our command is not there. That's because there is a bug in the menu settings. When you deploy a new command for the first time, you need to do a menu reset. I'll show you how to do this manually. Just right click on the toolbar and go to customize. Then hit the reset button. If you have commands in toolbars, you'll need to reset the toolbars as well.
There's another bug that sometimes causes the rest of the menus to disappear. In that case, you have to restart Vault Explorer. Now our command shows up. Hello world. There's a programmatic way to do the menu reset. I won't go over it in this video, but it'll be in the additional materials section. Again, this is a simple example that I showed, but it illustrates the steps in getting your customization to work.